I got everything all ready in plenty of time. And I was sitting here diddling, I was texting and things. And all of a sudden I realized I forgot to set up all my video stuff. <laughs> it's been too long that I did a live when that happens. And then, of course, what do you know? My video camera needed to update. <laughs> so I'm a little bit late, I apologize. But for those of you that may have never been here before, I'm Katie. I am so thrilled that you are in our cooking group. I love nothing more than cooking and baking for others. So um, as you jump in here today, Happy New Year to all of you. I mean, this is the first cooking class of 2022. I wrote a check out the other day for 2022 and I didn't mess up. <laughs> is that winning or what? How many have you... Uh, written a check out or written a date and still was 2021. Mm -hmm. You're not alone, I'm sure. Uh, but I happen to be so excited that I didn't mess up. So anyway, let me find us to make sure that I am indeed in the right group because, well, you know, I had to update and um, I just never know where it went, but I think I am. There we are. Hey, everyone. Trish, Linda, Janine, Mom. Ah, oh, so excited. Thank you for being here. Thank you for always being here and being supportive and all that fun stuff. I am so excited. So, how many of you have gotten the subscription Taste Buds with Pamper Chef? Hmm, if you did not, um, if you struggle once in a while with knowing what to make, how to make it, um, this might be for you. Maybe did you get it for Christmas? I know several people bought it. Uh, I heard people were giving it for gifts. But um, this is what we're going to be making today. And this all comes in one box or a little, little package. Let's put it that way. Um, but I always look forward to these. They always give us uh, the season of the month that, they're, that we're going to be using. And so today, let's see over there. Um, so today we are going to, and they're calling this the Holiday Traveler Packet. I believe this came before the holidays, put it that way. <laughs> I saw mine is uh, out for delivery for the January one, and I was hoping it was going to be here because I heard it's going to be a brand new seasoning in there. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, but we're going to still use the holiday one. Not wrong with that, you know. Um, I, in fact, I was going to use it before the holidays. Um, and I just didn't have time. But anyway, this one is Dill Lotkis. I don't know, but it looks pretty good. This has um, dill pickle in it. According to the recipe, it has potato, onion, egg, breadcrumbs, dill seasoning, baking powder. So it sounds pretty awesome. I don't know. And then there is this, is it Bolognese stuffed shells? Um, I'm always scared to venture out something different than um, my regular stuffed shell recipe. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with giving this a try. I'm trying to see. I believe the Bologna sauce is probably made with mushroom, but I don't see. This says baby spinach. Awesome. Well, we used to have that Bologna sauce about a year or so ago, and they discontinued it. So that would have been perfect. But anyway. So the third recipe, and don't you love these cards? This is a chicken and potadillas, and that's what we're gonna make today. Oh, uh, what? I'm so excited. So let me turn, let me turn my oven on. I almost forgot. Turn my oven to 400. Oh my heavens! I'm talking and not pushing my start button before. There we go. Um, so it does come with a recipe, three recipe cards. But then it also comes with a card. This is what I love. It has it on the back. It has three different columns that you can have different other ideas on what to make with those seasonings they sent you. So that means there's three other seasonings under that recipe. So technically, you're getting three, six, to almost a half a month's worth of recipes. And then you just repeat, like rinse and repeat, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, just, you know, repeat the recipes or sprinkle in some of your own recipes that you normally use. Um, this is just a substitute for those days that, oh my goodness, I don't know what to make, 
then you can pull one of these out. So once a week, then you'd have a one new recipe to try a week if you want to do monthly like that. I mean, it's super easy. And um, it takes all the guesswork out for you. Like underneath the garlic and herb, which we're going to use today, um, it, it has a whole seasoned chicken, garlic and herb buttered broccoli. I mean, that sounds amazing. Garlic and herb croutons. Have you ever made your own croutons? Oh, let me tell you, if you have never made your own croutons, now, I try not to eat them now because, well, you know, the figure you have to try to hold after you're 50. <laughs> but needless to say, I love croutons, especially Ruby Tuesday's croutons. Oh, have you ever eaten their croutons? They deep fry them. Mm hmm Yeah, they're pretty delicious. So they taste like french fries when you're eating them. Um, hey everyone, hey Deb, welcome. So this comes with it. And so today we are, I'm gonna put the rest of these recipes uh, to the side and we're gonna make our um, chicken and potadillas. And it also tells you what you can serve this with. So you can serve it with rice, beans, um, or a salad. So it gives you all of the tips right there if that's something you struggle with. And then it also gives you little um, change-ups at the bottom. If you want a sweet spin on it, if you want more protein, if you want more pepper or more cheese, um, it gives you all those different options. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I never bought a like a HelloFresh or any other subscription, um, but I have bought several boxes of these and it's high time I use them up because, well, they are slowly adding up here. So anyway, oh, I know, Anita, aren't they the best? Oh, um, but anyway, they, I'm, I'm sad you don't have Ruby Tuesdays up your way, but they really are good. They're like one of my favorite restaurants. Um, however, since the pandemic, I've noticed that they're not as good. <laughs> I only have eaten in there maybe once or twice since the pandemic. I don't go in there very often, but um, I always, if I'm out on the road and I want a quick salad, I can always jump in there, but I wasn't too impressed with my local one the other month um, when I finally went in there. So maybe some other ones are better than our local one. Mm, yeah. Sometimes small town restaurants are not always what some larger ones are, um, but anyway. So um, I know, Linda, I should be making this gluten-free, but I'm not. Um, uh, we're going to start our chicken. It called for, um, I'm going to put a little bit of oil because this is chicken and I don't want it to stick too, too bad. But um, I'm using ground chicken. If you don't want to use ground chicken, you can use ground beef. But I happen to have ground chicken in my freezer, so I thought, might as well, right? Um, so while we're going to also do um, the garlic and herb, and I couldn't find my container, so I must be out because this is like one of my favorite, one of my most used seasonings, I should say. I have so many favorites, but this is one of my most used seasonings, um, and I love these seasoning packets. Um, we're going to sprinkle about a tablespoon over top of that. Um, these, this is, it's this full, so that's a good amount of seasoning that you're getting in your packet. So if there's even some seasonings that you just want to give it a try, um, this is a great way to try a few of our seasonings before you buy a whole bottle. Um, but honestly, I think this is almost like a half a bottle. Really, when I dumped it in one of my bottles one time, I was shocked at how full it made my bottle. Um, but anyway, garlic and herb is one of my favorite. It's great on potatoes. Gives your potatoes amazing flavor. I'm sure if you want to roast uh, um, other vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, oh, it would be so delicious. Didn't this one card even have a recipe for broccoli? See, so you can you can use it for anything. So anyway, we're gonna set that to the side, and while while this is frying, we're going to chop up some other things. Okay, get in there. All right, so I have a half of a jalapeno here. Again, if you don't like it this spicy, then don't put the jalapeno in, okay? Um, it, I, I freeze my jalapenos, those of you that know how I do mine. I'm not gonna put quite the whole jalapeno in. I don't trust it. It might be okay, it might not be. So anyway, I'm gonna chop. I'm just gonna chop up that little jalapeno and we're gonna fry that right in with that chicken, okay? 
And then I had some sweet peppers that were gonna go bad if I don't use them. Anybody else? Whoop! I forgot to put my hair back. Anybody else uh, have a fridge clean out day, right? Um, where you feel like there's just some things that are gonna go bad if you don't use them up quickly. Um, so that's what I was doing with this. I saw I had some peppers in there and I was trying to decide what I wanted to make. I uh, knew had some chicken in the freezer. Um, these would freeze easily if you want to um, take the seeds out and freeze them and then just get them out later. It works awesome for that. So that would be a great way to use these up too. But I felt, well, I'll use them up because I have fresh. In fact, I think I do have some in the freezer already. Um, but anyway, we're going to just chop this up. There we go. And next, it calls for, let me look, I have to put on my glasses. Oh yeah, freezing peppers, Linda, is the best. Thing. So next we have we did the chicken, the bell pepper. Oh, the bell pepper goes in there too. Okay. There we go. And let's chop this up. Oh, I smell that already. Hey, you guys, my smell, my sense of smell is coming back, which is super awesome. I can smell, I can smell some different things now. So I am happy about that. It's almost a year that I really lost my sense of smell, but it's coming back slowly. All right. So let that fry up a little bit more. And why don't we let that fry? Let's see what we can else, what else we can do. Chicken, bell pepper, cook. Okay, we got that. So next we do the salsa. A tablespoon of the rub goes into the chicken, which we did. Simmer until the salsa, so we got to just get the salsa ready. So, how many of you, hey Kim. Oh, no worries. No worries. I heard it dinging before I, um, before I actually went live, so you are good, good. My phone, I have no Facebook notifications on my phone because I can't handle any notifications on my phone. So that's why I tell people, if you ever want to get a hold of me, don't message me on Facebook. Uh, if you're desperate, call me or message, text me because I have no notifications saved on or on my phone because I don't like that. Anyway, we're going to use um, salsa verde. Have you guys ever used this? It's like a green salsa. You can use it just like regular salsa. If you don't have this, you can use regular salsa, whatever. But the recipe called for uh, for the green verde, which I did have. Most Mexican dishes call for this, hence the big container of it, because I love Mexican food, okay? So we got this, and of course, we're going to make sure that our chicken is cooked up a little first. I don't want any raw chicken. And then we're going to simmer that with our chicken. And chicken tends to be more on the raw, or more on the dry side. So, that's why I say, if you'd rather just use beef, then just use beef. Chicken is definitely more low carb, but it's not really low carb anyway, because I'm not using gluten-free dough. So, you know, that's what it is. So we'll throw that in there. go. I should have thought ahead and, and made a gluten-free dough, but you know, I had some dough in the freezer that I wanted to use up. I'm trying to use up my green. You know what? That, I think that needs a little bit more. It looks a little dry yet. I'm going to put a little more in there. One nice thing with doing your own recipes, you can kind of change them up, right? This is done. So I'm going to turn this off. You can add or take away something that you don't like if you're making your own recipes. So, I'm gonna do, well, maybe I shouldn't do any more. Because is it gonna ooze out of my dough if I put too much in? Oh well, we're gonna put a little bit more in because after all, salsa is life and I don't like things dry. So, there we go. We're going to, I'm sure I can hear my son complaining already that I should have used beef instead of chicken, but 
it's it's what it is, right? So now what do we do? And it gives you step by step. And one thing I've noticed, these recipe directions are way easier to follow than some of our other recipes in our Seasons Best for some reason. So now we unroll the pizza crust, stretch it either to make small ones or big ones. Okay, well that's, that's easy enough. I can do that. <laughs> we can do this, you know? Okay, so let me put my glasses over there. And of course I have my awesome, hey Andrea, um, my baker's roller. Where did the green onions go? <laughs> See, I put stuff out. I put stuff out and I have to make sure I use them all up, right? Oh, wrong one. I'm like, wait a minute, this is not adding up. Oh, here it is. It said, green onion, stir the cheese and onion. Okay, I just didn't read far enough. There we go. So we've got the green onion and the cheese and we've got, we got our dough here. You can use, you can use pill, pills, bear, another uh, nut of mark or a um, spam caller. Anyone else getting all these spam calls? How many um, s inspections do we need on our vehicles or um, that are whatever ran out? Uh, no one has time for that. If I want to renew my thing, I can do that on my own, right? Anyway, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my, oh, I didn't get my baking dish either. <laughs> I tell you, see, when you don't do something for so long, you, you just forget. Let me grab my baking dish. And again, you could put um, uh, like parchment paper so it doesn't stick, which I might do that. I am, I am fast becoming a lover of parchment paper because I know that nothing sticks, everything will be perfect when you use parchment paper. So that's what I love. So let's go back to our dough. And again, you just take a small little piece of dough and you roll this out however thick you want it. If you want to make a big piece uh, of an apatadilla, then you can, like a big family size, I guess, but this is supposed to be like individual sizes. So we're just gonna roll this out. There we go. And then I'm gonna take some of this mixture and put it right in the center with a little bit of onion. And again, you guys, I freeze my green onion tops. Um, I had to take something for New Year's Day and, um, we had green onion tops and I was out. So I was super excited to find some more at Aldi. Oh boy, I overpacked this. Oh boy. But you know what? Thankfully, dough stretches. Is that, <laughs> is that why we stretch? Ah, uh, so we can be more pliable? Well, you know, the Bible tells us to be pliable and apply all things, but I don't like that I stretch like that, but oh well, you know? There we go. So let's put him over there. Perfect, it's a little bit big maybe for personal size, but again, um, I don't always do everything the way it's measured or the way that it says. So put a bit more dough out there or flour and then just roll this out. And you probably, if this dough would not be so cold, it would probably roll a little bit easier, but you know, it was in the freezer this morning, so I'm doing good that I got it, that I remembered to get it out, is what my thing was. But the nice thing when you meal prep, you can, you know exactly when you need to get something out, right? That's what I like about these too, where you can look at the recipe and know exactly what you need to get out for tomorrow or whatever. I'm just gonna make two of these tonight and then the rest I'll make for tomorrow because um, my son will probably just eat two of them tonight because I will probably just eat the mixture without the dough I'm just saying because I don't want to be stretched anymore 
So press those edges down. I'm impressed. It looks like an empanadilla, right? There we go. Put that over on your baking sheet. And now we're going to take an egg that I already pre-whipped. I just took one egg and used the mini whipper. A lot of people wonder what you can use the whipper for. Just use the mini whipper and uh, whisk this up a little bit and brush it on top of your pastry, your pastry dough, your stromboli, your, your impatadilla, whatever you're doing. And then it says to, where did I put the seasoning packet? Then it says to sprinkle a little bit of the seasoning over top for color and for flavor, right? Let's grab a spoon. Let me bring it over here so you guys can see better. There we go. There we go. Woohoo! Oh, I feel like it's chef when I do that. <laughs> Except they probably just use their fingers. So there we go. And I think it says something about slitting the top so it can breathe. So let's just make two little slits. Did that go through? Oh, whoops. Next I'll make it too big. There we go. Alrighty, awesome, awesome. There, that was pretty easy. I mean, if I can do it, everybody else can, right? So I know that that's gonna be one of my son's favorite. He loves pizza, he loves dipping anything in. Okay, now how long does this have to go? He loves dipping anything in sauce. I'm telling you, I'm losing everything today. I don't know where I stuck my glasses because for some reason my eyes, oh, duh, right in front of me. For some reason my eyes are not being focused today. I think it's too dark. Ooh, um, bake 16 to 18 minutes. There we go, so it's not soggy. All right, okay, Google, it's a timer for 15 minutes. I feel like my oven bakes harder sometimes. Um, and so I just, I, I try to do 15 minutes and then go from there. Uh, I know, Jenna, right? How many warranties do we need for one vehicle? I tell you, it's pretty crazy. Um, yes, I did egg wash the top. That way the seasoning stays and it just adds more brown color, I feel, to that as well. So that's what we are, um, that's what we're having for dinner tonight. So what are you guys having for dinner? I would love to know. I have two parties running this week um, and several next week. Actually, every day, every week this week, I got parties, or this month, I've got parties, which is pretty fun and exciting because it's double points month. So if you ever thought of wanting to host your own party, this is the month to do it. Either Facebook or in-home, there's still plenty of time. Uh, my next party, my in-home party next week is next Friday, Saturday, I think it is. Um, and we're, it's going to be an in-home party. I'm super excited for that one. There's two girls doing it together, and that's going to be fun. Um, but I have two Facebook parties this week, and it was supposed to be two in-home parties next week. The one lady canceled, um, and then the next week it's going to be two more Facebook parties. So I'm really digging these Facebook parties for the winter months, um, but I really do like uh, going out and meeting all my customers and friends. So anyway, thank you for being here. You're having a ham loaf, Linda, salad and leftover veggies. Oh yes, that's always one of our go-to meals too. Love it. Awesome, well you guys take care. You guys have a wonderful rest of the evening. Pork, peppers, onions, mushrooms done in the back. Oh yes, you know how to do it. Janice, I tell you, you guys know how to do it. Uh, rotisserie, oh yes, Tracy. Ah. Uh, Love it. So many good meals. I tell you, I'm so proud of all of you. All the meals that you guys cook, it's great. So anyway, thanks for being here. See you next week. All right, take care.